Good morning, everyone. The webinar will start in just a few moments. Okay, it's just a few minutes past 10 o'clock and I'd like to start my webinars on time and end them on time. So welcome everyone to Interview Strategies in the New Normal. My name is Liz Hart and um, this is part of the Reimagine Your Career webinar series. Here is a um, picture of me so you can see what I look like. I will put my camera on at the end of the webinar, but um, I am the founder and executive director of Tailored for Success. Um, I want to congratulate you all for taking the time to work on your professional development during these challenging times. Um, a little bit about me so that you know um, who is leading this workshop today. I have over 20 years of workforce development experience um, in helping people with career transition and um, resume writing, how to prepare for interviews, and have facilitated um, hundreds of webinars and workshops on this topic. So. I think I have a lot of information to share with you, and I am just so happy that you're here. So for those of you who don't know, this is a little bit about Tailored for Success. We are a nonprofit organization that focuses on helping people find, prepare, and succeed in the workforce. Here's a list of some of our programs and services. We focus on job readiness and professional development. Um, which is where the Reimagine Your Career webinar series started. And um, this is a series that we started to help people um, as a result of COVID-19. Um, we also have a career closet where we provide free business clothing for women and men. And um, of course, we also are very interested in helping veterans make the transition from military to civilian careers through our Boots to Suits program, a transition program for women veterans. But we also, with this program, also serve men um, who are also veterans. So um, that's just a little bit about us. Before we begin, I want to let you know that we're going to keep all the lines muted throughout the presentation. This helps to speed up the bandwidth and it also helps with background noise that um, may happen um, from time to time. I'll certainly open up for questions at the end of the presentation, um, but if you have a burning question or need me to slow down or clarify something, please feel free to put a question in the chat box and I will um, be monitoring that throughout the presentation. 
Today's recording um, of the presentation will be posted on our YouTube channel so that you can watch it again um, for future reference. And any of handouts that I talk about today, I will send within a few days of the presentation. So let's dive in. There's a lot of material to cover. Um, and just to take a little um, test to make sure you're all in the right place, you're in the right place if the thought of interviewing makes you nervous. Um, if you're wondering how to interview in this new normal, you are definitely in the right place. If you have questions on how to dress for an interview, whether it's in person or remote, you're definitely in the right place. So um, if this is the place that you thought you were going to be, um, thank you for joining us and you're here and hopefully the tips and strategies I give you today will be able to help you. Um, just a little um, information, um, a lot of people are nervous about interviewing, but um, a Everest College, which is out in Los Angeles, did a national study in 2013 to look at um, the anxiety that people feel when they're um, having to interview. And they interviewed 1,000 adults um, about their anxiety and how they feel about interviewing. 50% felt anxiety because of being unprepared for a job interview which makes sense um, because if you think about it, um, there's so much riding on a job interview or so we think. I think people tend to think a job interview is a make or break for their career. Um, it may be the one job that's going to solve all the financial problems or whatever, but that's not always necessarily true. Um, you'll have many, many interviews over the span of your career and um, You'll be nervous no matter what. Um, before I started Taylor for Success, I interviewed a lot. Um, and at first I was nervous about interviewing, but then I found the secret of um, dealing with the anxiety and mitigating how I felt before an interview. And that secret is just preparation. Um, people tend to not prepare as much as they should um, because they think they can just wing it or they've heard of people who have gotten jobs without preparing. Um, you wanna put yourself in the best light, especially in these um, challenging times where there are a lot of people applying for very few jobs. So let me um, just advance the slides and talk a little bit about what we're gonna go over in the time that we have together today. First, I'm gonna to talk to you about the interview process, and it is a process. I will discuss the entire process from start to finish. Like anything else in life, if you don't have a plan, a goal, or know the steps, you'll be at a significant disadvantage. My overview will give three of the most important things that you need to know about interviews. Then, I'll talk a little bit about interviewing in the new normal. Um, what's the difference between an in-person interview and a remote interview? What are things, what are the trends for interviewing now and so forth? Then talk about um, some tips and strategies for doing a virtual interview and how to prepare for it and how to make the most of your virtual interview. And lastly, I will round it up with um, my interview with confidence, which is a four-step process that I developed over the years of um, that you can use to help you feel more confident um, in your interview um, situation. Um, I want to give you a little spoiler alert though before we go any further. Um, whether the interview is in person or virtual, you're going to prepare the same way and follow the same format. Um, there are tips that I will give you um, for making the best of a virtual interview, but it's not going to be any different than an in-person interview. It's still an interview. You still have to be prepared for the questions. It's going to be you and the recruiter or the hiring manager sitting together, having a conversation. Everything is the same except for the environment with which you're doing the interview in. So um, 
no worries, you got this. And um, hopefully by the end of the workshop, you will um, feel a lot more confident. So when we talk about the interview process, um, the interview process can start even before you get in front of a recruiter. And um, when you think about it, what actually is an interview, right? Um, when we're talking about interviews, you need to think about it as just 30 to 40 minutes that you're spending sitting anxiously across from a potential employer in your business suit um, or sitting in front of a computer screen staring at a green dot. Um, but really, if you want to break it down to what it really is, an interview is nothing more than just a conversation. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end to the conversation. Um, and typically, a job interview will last between 30 to 40 minutes to an hour, just depending on how the conversation goes. Um, the process of interviewing can last for days, weeks, or even months, right? So you're in job search and you're, um, you know that you will have an interview, so you can't just start the day before the interview. You have to really prepare, and a big part of this process comes with the prep work that you do and the practice that you do to ensure that your interview goes smoothly. So even though um, an interview can be stressful, much of the hard work of interviewing happens before you even show up, starting from the moment that you find out that you have one. So when you find out that you have an actual interview, that's when you start to do your research. And um, the average job seeker um, knows that they have at the very least need to research the company. But what I wanted to do is give you another inside tip. Um, you're not really speaking to the company. It's good that you know all about the company, but you're speaking with an interviewer. And there's so many resources out there now for you to find out who exactly you're speaking with that you shouldn't overlook this step. You know, look up on LinkedIn who this person is that you're speaking with. See what you can find out about them so that will help the um, conversation go a little bit smoother. Um, you want to visit sites like Glassdoor, The Vault, um, LinkedIn, which I mentioned, and Google to research to do your research. Um, a lot of people don't think about researching the company on Google, but um, and they just really stick to Glassdoor, The Vault. But you can find out a lot about a company on Google and you can find out uh, maybe who the competitors are, what's happening recently with the company. So don't overlook um, doing a basic Google search on the company. Um, preparation is the key to this. Um, it's a multi-step process. You cannot over-prepare for an interview. Um, you can't over-prepare answering common interview questions and we all know what they are you know the, the basic tell me about yourself how do you handle stress and pressure and so forth what your goals are um, I will prepare a resource list that I'll send out with um, some links to websites and stuff that you can use to practice your answers to these questions and the main thing to remember is that um, you're not going to memorize your answers to the questions because that's going to really sound robotic. It's got to sound natural. It's got to just, your answers to these questions have to just roll off your tongue and be as natural as possible. And you have to also think about the fact that the question, tell me about yourself, may be phrased in another way. So you may need to look at if someone says, you know, tell me about your experience at your last job, you know, they're asking you basically, tell me about yourself. Tell me a little bit more than what is on the resume that they've already already reviewed. And um, when you think about it, um, another thing to keep in mind is that um, recently I saw that there are about 250 applicants for any one particular job, and then only about four or five, maybe six people will be actually interviewed. So um, if you're feeling frustrated in your job search, just keep that in mind. I mean, it's a very, it's a very competitive field right now, and um, that's all the more reason for you to expand your, your job search and um, look for opportunities in different areas and not just apply for one job, but apply for many jobs. But um, 
um, we will get into that um, later or actually on another webinar. But remember that, you know, it is um, a multi-step process and the more you practice, the better. One tip that I think is really helpful right now, um, most people are familiar with Zoom. I use the platform GoToMeeting for my webinars, but um, you can get a Zoom um, membership for free and you'll get about 45 minutes um, where you can um, actually have a meeting of one, a Zoom meeting of one where you can practice your answers to questions um, and then record it and run it back and see how you do. It's gonna feel a little funny at first and strange just sort of talking to yourself, but what better way to see you know, how you're actually doing in an interview than to record yourself. Um, maybe get a friend or family member to help you. They can ask you the questions and then you can answer them and just practice, practice, practice um, so that that you found, sound more natural in answering these questions. So a little levity in this, because I think that people tend to take job interviews a little bit too seriously, but when you think about it, a job interview is nothing more than um, the analogy of a first date, right? First impressions always count. Awkwardness can occur and outcomes are definitely unpredictable. Um, there are three really important things that you need to know about interviews just in general. Um, the first thing is what I've mentioned before, that it's essentially just a conversation between you and the recruiter or the hiring manager, if you're lucky enough to, um, to get to that point. Most of the times you'll talk to a recruiter or a screener first before you get to the hiring manager, but you're just having a conversation, you know, just like on a date, you're seeing if you like them, if they like you or whatever. So you're just having a conversation, that's all. And, and if you think about it that way, you won't be as nervous. Um, when you think about interviews in general, there are really only five questions that you need to be able to answer. Um, you'll go on websites and you'll see lists and lists of questions that could potentially come up. You know, that tell me about yourself. Why did you leave your last job? Um, why are you applying for this job? Tell me why you're here um, and how you could help my company. But generally, they're all grouped in five different categories, right? So the first category is why are you here? And that means, why are you knocking on my door rather than somebody else's job door? So why are you applying for this job versus another one? Um, how much do you know about us and what we do here? You don't ask the question, you know, tell me about, you know, what your company does on an interview. That's, that's a, a red flag right at the beginning and it's not gonna get you further. But um, when they're asking, um, questions like, tell me about yourself, why are you applying for this job? Basically, that's the first most important question of why are you here? The second one is, what can you do for us? This means if we're going to hire you, how will you help us with the tasks and challenges that we face here? How will you qualify for this job? How would you perform on this job under stress? How would you help solve problems? What kind of team member are you going to be? What are your relevant skills? And give us some examples or stories from your past that demonstrate that you have these skills. One thing when you're practicing the questions is always to try to answer them in stories. People love stories rather than just you know, curt answers and quick answers. Tell them a story that, that demonstrates how you handled something um, in particular. Um, the third type of question is, what kind of person are you? Um, this type of question is they're trying to figure out whether or not you will um, fit in, um, whether or not you'll inspire the people who are around you. Will you fit into the culture there? Um, Will you be a pleasure to work with or will you have a problem from day one? Um, do you have the kind of personality that makes it easy for people to work with you, for you? Um, do you share the same values that this company has? And by the way, what are your greatest weaknesses? Okay, so the fourth type of question is the type of question that determines what distinguishes you from, say, 
the 19 or 250 other people who are um, applying or interviewing for this job. What will you give us that um, will be more value for our money? Okay, they're trying to find out what makes you unique or at least unusual. Do you get more done in a day than the average person? Are you better at problem solving? Um, do you work better? Do you have really good work habits? Um, and give us some examples of that. That's what they're trying to find out with this type of a question. And then the last question that you're going to need to be able to answer is the question of can we afford you? This means that um, if the company decides to hire you, um, how much money are you looking for? How will, um, will you be t willing to take a pay cut to work here? Um, do you know what your worth is in the job market? Um, a spoiler alert on this one is um, in any type of salary negotiation, and um, I don't think I mentioned it, but I'm a, um, AAUW um, trained salary negotiator and um, in any type of salary negotiation or even if you're negotiating benefits or whatever because that all that all makes up salary too the first person that talks loses so the first person that mentions a number is the loser um, if you if the person interviewing you asks you what type of salary you're looking for don't try to answer that with a definitive number. Um, try to be as vague as possible. Um, you know, you can say something like, well, I'm open to any opportunity, um, any salary that you offer me that is within the range of um, someone with my experience and qualifications. If they press you, which sometimes they will, um, give them a range. They know what they have for budget to hire you and they know what the position is worth in the marketplace. And what they're trying to do here is see if you know what the worth is, your worth is in the marketplace. So try not to um, mention a figure. If you have to mention a figure, if it gets really uncomfortable and you really have to mention something, then my advice would be to um, mention a figure that is about 10 to 20 percent higher than um, you think they would offer you, um, because then that way you're negotiating from a uh, position of strength. So um, just a little salary tip thrown in there. Um, one thing um, I advise is not to put all employers in the same bucket. Don't generalize on all employers that they're all bad or they're all trying to get um, people to work for them for the least amount of money. Every employer is different. Um, generalizing isn't a good idea. Um, and most people who are uh, job searching and interviewing don't have enough interviewing experience to really generalize like that. Um, you know, unless you're an interview guru and have gone on many, many interviews and sat on both sides of the table, you really can't generalize like that. So try to keep an open mind when you're um, in the interview process. Um, so let's move on to sort of the, um, the meat of the presentation, interviewing in the new normal. Um, since the pandemic struck, the good news is, and there is good news, that there are jobs to be had, but you need to adjust to interviewing in this new normal. It may seem a little impersonal, but the main thing is that you're being interviewed for a potential opportunity, and you should look at it like that. The first type of uh, interviewing that you'll do, especially now, um, before COVID, it may not have been as much, but now with COVID, you're definitely going to have um, for your first interview, it's going to be a screening interview. And that can be either by phone or by video. And um, typically, this is done by a recruiter or an HR person who, after looking at hundreds of resumes, has selected, say, 20 people who they fit they think fit the requirements and look like they could be a good fit for the um, for the company. Like I mentioned earlier, um, there's typically about 250 people that apply for one position and only about four to six will actually get an interview. So 
whittling it down to that fit. And if you're making the screening cut, that, that's a really good sign um, because it shows that you fit on paper. So the recruiter needs to do a little bit more screening before passing you on to the hiring manager. So with the phone screen or the video, it just saves everyone so much time. So before COVID, you may have had a screening interview that you had to go to in person. You had to, you know, take the tea there. You had to drive there, take time out of your day. Um, they had to take time out of their day. But now it's just so much easier because you could schedule the time, and it just saves everyone's time by doing it this way. And so, typically, the person who's doing the the screening, whether it's in person or, um, I mean, excuse me, whether it's on phone or video, will have a list of three to five questions that relate to the position that's asked of every single candidate. Um, I think um, the rules of HR say, and, and my husband works in HR, um, is that you have to ask each candidate the same question so that it's fair. Um, and they're gonna be basic questions that you could be reasonably asked for the position. So for instance, if you're applying for a project management position, a question might be, Tell me a time when you managed a project and it came in on budget. Um, you might be asked a little bit about your educational qualifications um, and so forth, but it'll be just basic questions that anyone who is applying for a particular position could answer. Um, and once you pass the phone screen, you'll probably be set up for um, a virtual interview and that interview can be either on on video or it could be um, a, a synchronous um, interview where you're actually talking to someone. But the trend now is that um, there are what they call on-demand interviews, which could be played over and over um, depending on how many people are involved in the hiring process. And so what it is is that you're sitting um, in front of uh, your computer screen and you're recording answers to questions and then those answers are played back for hiring managers. And the advantage of this is that um, it allows you, the candidate, to record the interview at your convenience. So, um, and there's typically predetermined questions, so you don't have to worry about, you know, finding a quiet place to, um, to interview um, with the recruiter, you know, sit in a closet where it's quiet or, or whatever. If you've got kids running around or whatever, you can do it at a time in a place where it's nice and quiet. Or you could actually be interviewed by someone in person. Um, one thing to keep in mind that um, this may be your first time being interviewed um, virtually um, by Zoom or some other platform. But this might also be the interviewer's first time of doing this. So the thing to remember is that you want to just make sure that the interview goes well, no matter if it's recorded or it's live or via Zoom. So that's the, that's the main thing. Um, the second type of interviewing you'll do is a formal interview, and that's either going to be in person um, or virtual via Zoom. Um, there are still places that are having in-person um, interviews um, with social distancing, of course, but um, that's when you're actually sitting down with um, most likely a decision maker that can help you, um, that can determine whether or not you're going to be fit for the job. Um, and so, like I said earlier, you know, an interview is an interview whether it's um, on video, by Zoom, on the phone, you still need to be prepared. The majority of the interviews now, though, are going to be virtual. And so there are some tips that um, can help you prepare for this. Um, the first one is your environment. You want to create a comfortable and professional environment. We all don't have a spare room that can serve as an office or a separate space for working. Um, but check where you're sitting and look what's around. Um, if you're doing this, if you're doing an interview in your bedroom in the corner, um, and I will, you know, I will admit that most of my Zoom calls are done in my bedroom because there's only one corner in my house that seems to have the best lighting and it's in my bedroom. But um, I angle the camera so that the only thing that people can see is um, what's behind me, which is just a window. Um, if the interviewer is looking at you and can see your unmade bed or you're in the kitchen and they see dishes drying on the sink and sounds funny, but I've been on calls like that. Um, 
you want to try to set up an area where you, you have a blank wall behind you, that's going to be the best one. Um, but you want to make sure that your environment looks professional. The good thing um, I will tell you about virtual interviewing is that you can have your notes with you and um, you just need to set them up and put them at a font so that it doesn't look like you're reading. But if you get stuck on a particular question, you can just look at your notes and, um, and refer to them in a virtual interview, something that you can't do in person. Um, you want to, like I said, make, make sure that the lighting is um, the optimal that it needs to be. Um, a tip is having the uh, lighting in front of you is usually the best. Um, it helps to brighten up the screen. So if you need to move a, a, a lamp or something and, do, and move it around so that the lighting is good, you want to make sure you do it beforehand. Um, basically, you want to view things from the view, the interviewer's perspective and make sure that they're seeing what you want them to see, which is that you are professional. You want to make sure that you check your technology um, to make sure that your computer is not only charged but plugged in. You never know what's going to happen. There could be a power surge. The interview could run long or be delayed. If you're using a headset, you want to test it and make sure it's on the right settings so that um, the mic that you're using, um, you're not shouting at the interviewer or speaking too low, that they can't hear you. And also be prepared in case of technical issues. One really good tip is to have the interviewer's phone number handy in case you need to call them, in case you, you lose your connection. I mean, you just never know what's going to happen. Um, one thing that people think in virtual interviewing is that they don't have to dress for an interview, but um, that would not be advisable. You still have to dress the part for an interview, whether it's virtual or not. It shows respect for the interviewer's time. Um, you want to make sure that when you are dressing for this virtual interview, you dress head to toe. Um, it shows the interviewer that you're serious, like I said, but also it puts you in the right mindset for interviewing. Um, and that's you know all the way down to the shoes that you're wearing. Um, if you're just sitting there in your fuzzy slippers and you have a suit on, you're still probably not in the right mindset for interviewing. Um, you want to make sure that you're wearing um, solid colors and nothing that's too loud or, or, or prints. Prints don't translate well on video. Um, sometimes they can be blurry. You want to stick to your neutral colors, blue, black, beige, um, and make sure that um, your hair um, and makeup, if you're a woman, are done, and that you have minimal jewelry, especially if you're a type of person that talks with your hands. Um, and one thing you don't really think about is um, the fabric that you're wearing, too. Some fabrics are very noisy, like corduroy, and that can distract your interviewer. And monitor your body language. You know, make sure that you're sitting up straight and you're looking into the, um, the little green dot, which is the camera, or if you have a webcam, looking into that. Make sure that you're angled so that your face and body take up about three-fourths of the screen and is, is centered so that you're um, replicating actually sitting across from someone at a table and the camera you know should be eye level so it appears that you're making eye contact with the person so if you have to stack your laptop up on books or paper or something like that do that because then that way um, you're looking directly at the person um, even you know I've heard of people putting little post-it notes near the um, the webcam so that they remember to look straight at it um, you want to eliminate as many distractions as you possibly can you want to make sure the people that that um, you live with, know that you're going to be interviewing during a certain time. Put your phone on um, silent or vibrate, or better yet, just shut it off. Um, because if it rings during an interview, it could be very distracting. And lastly, just be authentic. Um, you don't want to try to impress the interviewer by acting how you think they want you to be, right? You want to be yourself. I'm, it, it, it's not going to do you any good to get an offer on a job where you're not acting yourself and you have to play a part every day. You need to be authentic. Um, either this, this is the right job for you or it's not. And um, the only way for you to really tell and the only way for the person that's interviewing you to tell is for you to be authentic, just to be um, yourself. So let's um, talk about the interview process. Um, I put this together. Um, it's called Interview with Com Confidence. And I do a, um, an hour-long uh, webinar on just this, because um, 
like I said at the beginning of the webinar, there's a lot that goes into an interview that people don't think of. Um, there's two segments uh, before the interview and during and after the interview. And it's basically about four steps, right? So there's the pre-interview. And that's when you're doing all your research on the companies, you're practicing the questions, you're getting prepared so that you're as confident as possible. The more you practice, the more um, research you do, the more you know, the more you're going to be prepared and the more confident that you're going to be. And then that's all stuff that you can do way in advance of the interview. Um, the second step, like I talked about, was to dress to impress. And I've got a slide that follows this um, that goes into more specifics. Um, but during and after the interview is where, you know, this is this is where the rubber meets the road, right? So you you done your job search, you know, you prepared a great resume, they've chosen you, you've done the screening, and now you're in the interview, and this is where you don't want to lose it, right? Um, if they're interviewing you, it's a good bet that they want to hire you. Um, so they're really just looking for some reason not to hire you, right? So when you're in an interview, you need to remember that there's three parts to it. There's the opening, where you're just meeting people. Hi, my name is this, you know, um, you're meeting your interviewer, what they do in the company, you know, what their role is. Again, think of the first date, you know, um, you're just getting to know each other. And then there's the middle, which is like the exchange. This is where the questions are going back and forth. They're asking you questions and you should be prepared to ask them questions, right? Be prepared to come with a list of questions that you can ask them that shows your interest in the position. And then there's the closing and you'll know the closing because the person who's doing the interview will signal that the interview is over. Um, you don't signal that the interview is over. Um, you wait until they say, um, you know, thank you for your time, we'll be in touch or whatever. Um, this is where if you're confident enough at the closing stage, you wanna ask a question that goes something like this. It won't be these exact words because unless you've had a lot of practice doing this, it could come off as a little cocky. But you wanna ask something that, um, that gets them to think about if they have any reservations of making an offer. So typically when I was interviewing, I would say something like, is there anything in my background, my experience, my education, or how I've answered the questions you've asked that would um, keep you from offering me the job now? Um, and you say this because you wanna clear up anything that's on their mind before the interview is over. Because once it's over, you can't go back and answer the questions that they might have. And, um, you know, nine times out of 10, there's going to be a question that they're thinking about, that they want to ask, that they forget to ask or whatever. But you want to make sure that you get that out there right then and there so that you can answer the question. Maybe there was a gap in your resume and um, this person that's interviewing you is sort of new at it and they didn't really want to ask you about the gap. Um, they didn't want to seem to be impolite or whatever, um, but they were thinking about it. Um, but but there was a reason why there was a gap in, in, in your resume. Maybe you stayed home taking care of kids or a sick loved one or whatever, or you're in the military and um, your spouse was transferred. There's all different ways and reasons for people to have gaps. And if if that is bothering the person that's interviewing you, you want to get that out right then and there. And lastly um, is step four, which is the follow-up. Um, you're going to thank them at the close in step three, but um, you don't want to forget to thank them um, with a thank you note or email. Um, email is perfectly fine now. And when you're doing that thanking, you want to make sure that um, you mention something that happened in the interview. So maybe they talked a lot about the company culture. You can mention that in, in your um, thank you email, you know, thank you for taking the time to interview me um, and, and telling me more about your company culture. It sounds like the type of culture that I would thrive in and um, I would be a really good fit in, you know, something like that, something that shows that you were paying attention during the interview and that you picked up on certain clues um, that maybe they talked about a particular um, competitor you can mention that, um, just something that gives them a little bit more than thank you for your time, I look forward to hearing from you. 
Um, a decision is usually made um, some point after the interview. Um, this also could be um, talked about in the closing. You could ask as a final question, you know, when will a decision be made so that you know, um, so that you know um, how long you should wait before following up if you don't hear from them. So if they say that they're not going to make a decision for at least two weeks, you don't want to reach out to them before that two weeks is up. Um, that's just going to be annoying to them um, because it's usually when when you're hiring someone there's there's different layers that you have to go through and it takes time you know so um if it's they say it's two weeks it's probably two to three weeks so maybe give them an extra week and if you don't hear then definitely follow up with them to see if they made a decision and then there's the negotiation um when they make the job offer um and like i said earlier the first person that mentions Talk, mentions a figure as the salary is the first person that loses. Um, they know what they want to offer you. They know what the worth is in the marketplace. And this is where you do the negotiation. This is also where people get really nervous. Um, if they've done everything else correctly um, in the negotiation, this is where they may, um, may not do as well um, because they're not prepared to negotiate or they're feeling as if they can't negotiate. Right. Everyone can negotiate, um, even if, you know, um, and I understand, you know, times are tough right now. You may need this job um, to pay rent or mortgage or whatever, but your your interviewer will think more of you if you, you try to negotiate a little bit. You don't have to be, you know, really aggressive with it, but just, again, have a conversation about the salary. You know, if the salary is not what you expected it to be, Maybe there's some negotiation around the benefits. You know, maybe, you know, if the position is um, is virtual now or remote now, and it's going to be in person later, where you're going back into the office, maybe that's a negotiation point where you can say, you know what, would it be possible for this position to be 100% um, remote, or you know, three to four days remote, um, something like that. So there's always something to negotiate with. So don't be afraid to do that. It's just a way of, of talking to them. And as long as you're polite and respectful, it's it's really not it's not going to lose the um, the offer um, if you negotiate. Because if you get to the point where they're offering you a job, they put a lot of time into this, and they want you to say yes. They really do. So they're not going to say, well, you know this person you know was a really hard negotiator so we're not going to hire them they're going to hire you because you're a good negotiator because they they know that you're confident in your abilities they know that you know what your self-worth is and um and you're we're willing to demonstrate that to them that means most likely you're going to be a really good worker um so going back a little bit about dressing for the interview um you know this kind of shows you um, two sides of the coin, right? So, you know, the business casual, if you don't want to dress in a full suit or it's not going to be appropriate for the type of job that you're interviewing for and it, and it is um, via Zoom, dress business casual, you know, uh, a nice top, really good pants. Um, if you're working in like advertising or PR or retail or something like that, you can you can have like a sweater with some really interesting details, but as long as they just don't um, detract from what you're doing um, and the interviewer is not focusing on, on the top that you're wearing. Um, and if color suits you, wear a little bit of color. Pop of color is great. Um, if you're um, having a more formal interview, you want to you want to dress formally. You want to put that suit on. You want to make sure it's in a neutral color like the gray that's here, that you've got a button down blouse to go with it, and um, and that you're really showing the interviewer that you're you're taking care of um, that you're taking the interview um, very, very seriously. Even though you're at home, you know, you're still serious about this position. Same for men. Um, you want to make sure that you're you're dressed appropriately. Um, now, for a business casual look for men, you can just have a button-down shirt. You wouldn't necessarily have to wear the tie, and then just um, some dress pants and the shoes. Um, and you know, I emphasize dressing head to toe because you just never know when you may have to stand up, or you know, 
or you have to, you know, pick up something over the floor. And, you know, if you're dressed only from the waist up, you know, when you have shorts on underneath, they're going to know. So um, it's just, and again, it's that mindset of being in an interview, dressing for the interview and getting ready to do your best. So a time is, um, is just about up. Um, if you have any questions um, that you want to put in the chat, I'd be happy to answer them now. Um, you can always reach out to me on um, email after the fact if you've got a question that was not answered. But I'm hoping that you, after listening to the information that I've given you, that you do understand that whether it's a virtual interview or it's in person or it's a screening or a formal, an interview is an interview is an interview and you've got to prepare for it. The more you prepare, the more confident that you're going to be, the more you practice talking about yourself. A lot of people have a lot of um, trouble talking about themselves. So um, this isn't a time to be shy and not to toot your own horn. This is exactly the time to tell people what a good worker you are, how lucky they would be to have you, and that you're interested in their company and showing what you can do for their company and being an asset to their company. Um, it's it's not easy to you know to talk about yourself like that, but in order to get the job, that's what you're going to have to do, especially in these times um, when all the offices open back up um, after COVID, um, which you know I, I it, it, am fully hoping that will happen. You know, if not this year, definitely after the first of the year, and people are back to work in some kind of form or fashion, um, it's, it's going to be competitive. I mean, there are jobs out there right now, but um, even those jobs, um, it's going to be very, very competitive. Um, unemployment is, is at an all-time high, and everyone is looking for a job, and businesses are closing. It's a difficult time, so you have to just, you have to not be shy. Tell people, um, you know, what you can do for them. Um, if you're interested or you know someone who is interested, our next webinar um, will be next month in November where we're going to be honoring veterans. Um, the workshop will be on building on your military strengths and helping veterans who are about to transition out of the military into civilian jobs, um, ways to make that easier for them and put themselves in the best light. The webinar will be held on November 19th from 10 to 12. Um, it'll be a little bit longer time um, because we go into a lot of detail for the veterans and um, we have a speaker that will um, also do an introduction. So it'll be a little bit more time um, to pre-register for this. Um, you can just shoot me an email um, for yourself or for someone you know. Um, I urge you to please follow us and support our mission on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter. Um, we have groups um, for job seekers on both Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is where um, I, I post the most often um, because it's more of a professional platform than Facebook, but I, I do post on Facebook often also. And check out our website, you know, um, tailoredforsuccess.org. We just redesigned it. I'm very proud of it. And um, it gives you a lot more information about the services and the programs that the agency has. So um, I want to thank you for joining me today and taking time out of your busy day to learn um, some tips and some strategies for interviewing. And if there's no further questions, I um, hope you have a great rest of the day and rest of the week and good luck on your job search. <laughs>